Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today we are playing some classic Rug Delver, or should I say Canadian Threshold, because we are bringing back some old school technology here and hoping that it's going to work out quite well in the meta. This is part of my wider testing for European Legacy Masters. I've always been a big fan of classic Rug Delver, so I want to see if we can use some of the old technology and make it good again. We are not playing Delver in our Delver deck, so Canadian Threshold is definitely a better name for it. We have a Threshold card, so there we go. So we are playing a Tempo deck here. So we have four Dragon's Rage Channelers and three Nimble Mongoose as our early attackers. Now, the reason I've chosen these is that Nimble Mongoose does not ever get killed by Orcish Bowmasters because it has Shroud, which is quite important here. And it pairs incredibly well with Dragon's Rage Channeler who puts a load of cards in the graveyard. Now, Dragon's Rage Channeler does get killed by Orcish Bowmasters, but if it has Delirium when you play it, sort of after a couple of turns or whatever, or even if you get Delirium super early on, you can get it as early as turn two. If that happens, then this will not get pinged off, and subsequent copies of it won't get pinged off by Orcish Bowmasters either. So the idea is they're trying to be a little bit better against the Bowmasters. We also have four Tarmogoyf, just a, a big beefy creature that beats pretty much everything on the ground these days. Still, uh, great card, love playing it. Reminds me of the good old days. And we have a couple of Merktide Regents to top the curve. So we've got 13 creatures here. And we've got a bunch of disruption in the form of counter spells. So we've got Force of Will, Days. We've also got one Spell Pierce here as well. Now, the reason we're running Spell Pierce is it's really good at hitting out some early bits and pieces. We've got like removal in the form of Lightning Bolt and Unholy Heat for creatures. So we needed a little bit for spells. And because we're running Force Stifle in a classic tempo play of having four Wastelands and four Stifles, we're hopefully going to be restricting our opponent's mana so our things like Spell Pierce and Dazes are a lot stronger. Then we've got a bunch of cantrips in the form of Brainstorms and Ponders, as well as this Mistress Bauble, which we're hopefully going to be using for getting Delirium on our channelers and such like. I did go back and forth on whether or not we wanted this Spell Pierce or we wanted another Burn spell because of how prevalent Burn Masters is in the field, and obviously it hurts what we're doing. But we're going to try it this way and see what happens. Mana base wise, Three Trops, three Volks, bunch of fetch lands and the Wastelands. So it is very much the build from 10 years ago, but updated slightly with Channelers instead of Delvers. It does mean we have slightly less blue cards, but I think we still have plenty of blue cards here. I make it 23 blue cards in our main deck, which should be more than enough to support this force of will. So that's the main deck. Classic tempo, getting people with the Mongeese. Sideboard wise, one of the reasons I like Rug at the moment, and I want to be doing some testing with it, is because of how good Veil of Summer is right now. So Veil of Summer is just an incredible tool right now, given how prevalent Black is. So arguably the most powerful thing you can be doing in Legacy right now is the Troll of khazad Doom, Grief, Reanimate, Orcish Bowmasters. That sort of combo of cards there is kind of the core of so many decks right now. And it's incredibly potent. So we're trying to beat those things. Rather than join them, we're trying to have our own little plan that beats them. So we've also got a couple of Life from the Loam in our sideboard. Now, we can put people in a Wasteland Lock. Sometimes that is going to be great. And when it is going to be great, we want to be doing that. So this is some old technology. It used to be just one Life from the Loam, but I've decided to have two to see if I can test if the technology is still good. And I believe it is. I've definitely lost some games to Wasteland Lock lately, and I've Wasteland Locked other people. So maybe I want to be doing it in a Delver Shell as well. Then we've got some Graveyard Hate. We've got three Surgical Extraction and a Graph Digger's Cage. We have three Pyroblast. We struggle a little bit against opposing Merc Tides. This will help. We have a Cast into the Fire. There's a bit of flexible artifact removal that also pings off little creatures, specifically Orcs. And we have a couple of Meltdowns just to say no to the artifact decks. So... Pretty well rounded here. We don't have any additional threats and we don't have Brazen Borrower. Brazen Borrower is sort of fallen out of favour a little bit in the meta now because of Bowmasters being such a good way of invalidating the back half of it. But I still think Borrower is good. It's just a shame we couldn't fit it in here. Maybe it should be over the third Mongoose, but I want to test the Mongoose out. So here we are. So this is the deck and I'm looking forward to playing it. This reminds me of back in the day when I used to play Delver 10 odd years ago. So before we jump in, remember to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. It's the best way that you can help my videos out without giving me any money. 
And if you do want to give me money, by all means, get in touch and submit a donation deck and we can sort it out for you as well. All right, let's play some Rug Delver. Sorry, Canadian Threshold. Let's call it this proper name. All right, Canadian Threshold, let's go. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? They're a rental service that I personally use and I found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past. So why not give them a try? All right, our opening hand looks pretty good to me. I'm going to keep this one. We have one drop into another one drop and some filtering. Dwarven Ruins. Okay, our opponent's playing the horrible creative technique deck that I dislike. So let's start off with a Volcanic Island and a Dragon's Voice Channeler. Some scrying going on. Sorry, Surveil. Uh, we'll just put this into the graveyard. Let's draw another card. Unsurprisingly, they have a land over there. So we've got three types in in the very near future. If we daze, we get a fourth type in. So we've got these lands. All right, I'd like to find a wasteland this turn. Cast Ponder. Spell Pierce. That's not nothing. That lets us counter two creative techniques this turn if we need to. That's probably okay. All right, there's the wasteland. That's even better. So we'll put the daze, then the spell pierce, then the wasteland. Take the wasteland out here. Get rid of the hickory wood lot. This is one that can tap twice. So that's the better one to get rid of. The other one will die upon use. Maybe this is a matchup where we want our life from the loams. Just so we can waste and lock our opponent because they're going to never get to play the game properly. So we know the next card down is a day. I don't think we need a day. So I'm going to play this and crack this for a trop. Go attacks. Play our Nimble Mongoose. So we've got Spell Pierce or Days. So we've got Spell Pierce, Days, and Force of Will. And we get to play two of those cards. So we do get to stop the first creative techniques. And our opponent's going to have to sacrifice all their lands to do it. So they should be back in the Stone Age, but it depends on what the creature they find is. Hopefully they'll find one of the weaker ones, like the 6 mana 3 one would be nice, because we can ignore that. Whereas if it's one of the bigger boys, we might have to try and dig for some answers to that. Tap Sulfur Vent. Okay. Would have liked to have found a Brainstorm there, but we did not. We'll play Misty Rainforest, ready for brainstorming some cards away in the near future. There's an Ancient Tomb. So they can play around a Spell Pierce now. Or they're just going to cast the Maelstrom Wanderer. I don't think we can beat this. Are oh, they just casting a creative technique? Are oh, they going to let us demonstrate? So we could find a counter spell here. Mistress Bauble. I will play that. So we get to Surveil here. A Lightning Bolt. Uh, I guess we put this into our graveyard. Gives us some three, some bigger guys. So now we say no to this. Uh, I will leave this on top. We can't daze this, but we can force a bullet. Well, we're going to leave our brainstorm on top. We will crack the bauble in our opponent's turn here. Another land, sure. So we're going to draw the brainstorm, and then before our draw step. We're going to cast our brainstorm. And then we can shuffle away here. Uh, stifle. That's not unhelpful, is it? Because you can stifle the demonstrate trigger or the cascade trigger. So I think we'll put this on top of our library. Right, we'll put back these two lands. Uh, do we want this other land? Because then we can go Dragon's Rose Channeler and hold up two stifles. So yes, I will draw one of these lands. So we'll go to tax. Bash in for six. This gives us the win next turn with our creatures. So we get Trans Race Channeler, Tropical Island, crack this now, just so we don't have to worry about timings later on. Our opponent's deck is incredibly simple, it casts one spell, so. Stifle looking quite tasty here. A creative technique. We're going for the demonstrate here. We can stifle this. That's probably worth doing. Put this into our graveyard. Uh, no, we're just looking for a lightning bolt, I think, here. Yeah. Try and finish off the game. So they can do get one creative technique off. Hopefully they find... Oh, they found another creative technique. That's a real pain. So I think we have to let this demonstrate happen and try and stifle a cascade trigger. See if we can find an answer here. A Mertide Regent? Sure. We'll cast it. A boarding party. So we will 
get rid of the cascade here. Uh, that's a pretty good way of finding an answer, isn't it? But we might get some more surveils this turn anyway, so let's put these in the graveyard. I think our opponent has this game locked up. No cascade for you. So this one creative technique, it might be the last one in the deck. Because the list I ran the other day only had three creative techniques in. Okay, they have four creative techniques. Unfortunate. We can't cast a style because we have no targets for it. Yuck. Mm. Yeah, this uh, creative technique deck is an abomination. I don't think it's too good, but it's just not Magic the Gathering. So you just cast one spell and then the deck just runs itself. Right, Maelstrom Wanderer. This is possibly going to be pretty good here. They don't have, they got this one more creative technique to, to go through. So this is going to be a boarding party as well. We have two blockers and 17 life to work with. And they're going to have five, six guys. But I'm okay to just to see more of our opponent's deck to see how their build differs from the build that we played. Uh, so they've got Devastators, one Emrakul, uh, Sweet Gun Recluses, nothing unexpected here. They, they look like they're playing almost the exact same list that we were playing, except they have four creative techniques instead of three. Which is unfortunate, because we played around them having three. Right, so all these guys are going to be massive now. So we block the two biggest. This is 12. Oh, wait, they're all going to get another three, plus three counters, aren't they? So this is, so we block these two biggest ones, and there's still plenty of damage in there. All right. Oh, that's a weird way. Let's have it up here. So we don't have the most tools here. We can maybe get surgical extraction and stop the first round of stuff coming through. And pyroblast isn't really going to help. Uh, you can counter one of the guys, but that's not really going to get there. I like Life from the Low. If we can just put a Wasteland lock in, then our opponent won't win the game. So I think we're probably just boarding out our burn spells. It's relatively clean. So if we can stop the first creative technique like we did that time and just save extract it, we should be able to do okay. But post-board, they have Throws of Chaos and Tilt's Trickery, which is just a whole other thing. Right, so on the play here, keep this. We've got Channeler into some other stuff. If we can find the Wasteland, we can do the Wasteland lock. And that should be enough once we have a channeler in play. So turn one is Dragon's Channeler. Turn two is probably Ponder. That sees four cards to look for a wasteland. Right, Misty Rainforest. Sacrifice Misty Rainforest. Go get ourselves a Volcanic Island. Get our pressure down first. Our opponent cannot win on turn one of the game. They are a turn two combo deck if they have the right lands for the Throws of Chaos plan. Okay, they will not be going on turn two because this does, they will not have access to red mana next turn. So we do have another turn to sculpt if we want to. So I think we will cast this Ponder. Uh, this can go into the graveyard for now. Force of Will, Force of Will, Merktide Regent. It's not really what we're after. We're looking for a land and a wasteland. So a Stifle. All right. That's not ideal. So our opponent can't go this turn because they can't cast Throws of Chaos. But they can go next turn. So we need to find ourselves a wasteland. Pretty sharpish. A day. That doesn't help too much. So let's cast this Brainstorm. I guess better than nothing, isn't it? So I think we have to do that. Okay, so we found the Wasteland as well. That's excellent. So we put the Mongoose and the Tarmogoyf on top. Those are things for later. Put out our Wasteland. We will crack off this Saprazan Scary. Or is it this or the Dwarven Ruins? The Dwarven Ruins allows them to cast Throws of Chaos. But this is a one shot and done, whereas Saptown Scary can be used twice. So hopefully we can scry some cards off the top in the near future. We have a lot of permission in our hand, but we don't really have anywhere to go with it right now. All right, but we might get to surveil a lot of cards this turn. Hickory Woodlot tapped. That's good news for us. And there's the Mongoose we knew about. So we're going to tax here. Tap for one. We will discard the Mongoose because the Goyf is going to be bigger when the time comes. This also gives us a 3-3 now. Tap Solvents. No play from our opponent. That's fascinating. A Wasteland, you say. Um, which one of these do we care about most? I think it's the Woodlot, just because the spider is kind of annoying, just as the thing on its own, because it's got reach. Let's go attacks. If we can find a Tropical Island or a Fetchland, then we can 
just go and get ourselves Life from the Lone Wasteland on the go. We only have to do it every other turn as well because we got two Wastelands. We do have to make it through this turn though. Solve Event tapped. It looks like I'm saving up for a Maelstrom Wanderer play. All right, we'll just keep doing the Wastelands here. Ghost Quarter also is a Wasteland in this matchup for people who are looking at how to tackle this deck. So our opponent doesn't have any green mana at present, so they're not going to be able to cast a Maelstrom Wonder. That's what we're hoping for here. Not sure what our opponent's thinking about. Maybe they had to step away from the computer for a bit, but they are letting their time burn down quite a lot here. Not that I think it particularly matters in this matchup. Or ever with the Cascade deck, really. Right, so they're flashing in the Sash Sakashima's Protégé. So I think we will stifle this trigger. It's not the land we really want, is it? I think we have to put this into the graveyard. So this can become a wasteland. If we want to, right? Any permanent. And it's not targeted. Alright. I'm happy to let this sit in play because we handily beat this. In the race. We just need to keep their other stuff down. So they've only got assault events now. So our days is and force would be pretty tasty here. And coming for three. Be my guest opponent. Can I have Tropical Island? No Tropical Islands allowed. I assure you I am running Tropical Islands in this deck. Alright, opponent. We got an, a regular Soul Land. You do not. We have one more Wasteland in our deck. I don't think we need all of these Tarmogoyfs. Alright, opponent. What is the Delio? An Aurora Phoenix. We will stifle this trigger. Uh, I guess we'll put this into our graveyard. It's not the colour we're looking for. So we'll start with the Cascade Trigger. And then we'll daze the Phoenix. Alright, I'll probably scoop into that. So the Wasteland plan, pretty effective. I think we're going to just keep it running and go again. We didn't get the Loam Lock, but it would have been excellent there. Alright, we have the green for the Loam Lock. We have a threat. We've got double counter spells. This seems acceptable. The Stifles are decidedly good. I think their best bet is to try and save up and cast the Maelstrom Wanderer because we can't stifle like triple Cascade Triggers. It's only seven mana, I think, so it doesn't take them much more. Maybe it's eight, but it's, it's functionally the same for what their deck does because they have mana in increments of two. So this doesn't cast Throws of Chaos. So we just play out our little friend here. Play out this Mistress Bauble. We want to see more cards, so we're just going to fire this off now. A surgical Extraction. If we can stop the first creative technique, we can stop all of them. But I'd still rather fight over our opponent's lands before we start worrying about the rest of it. Saprazan Scary. Which of our lands are we most... Which of their lands we most want to get here? I think it's the... The Woodlot. We can attack here. And bash. We have an emergency brainstorm if we want to, but it's basically also our blue card in case something goes wrong, which seems very unlikely to happen. Sure, another Sapratan Scary. A Wasteland, you see. Don't mind if I do. Just keep hitting your lands over there, opponent. Our clock isn't very fast just yet. Ancient Tomb. Should we draw here? A Mishra's Bauble. Okay, I would like to start off with a brainstorm, please. We're not doing Merktide Regent yet, are we? I think we are putting back two lands. And then we'll play out this land. Play this one out. Crack this. Get our Volcanic. And look at our opponent. Hickory Woodlock, sure. We're now one card away from Threshold. Which will dramatically speed up our clock. Let's see what our bonus card here is. Another Force of Will. Okay, don't mind if I do. Hickory Woodlock, sure. A Nimble Mongoose. As much as I want the clock to be better, I don't really want to use any of our tools here. So we could play a Mongoose, daze it, pay for the daze, just to get things going. We can make a Merc side, but it won't be very big. Make a 4-4, four, four, but that also those shields down on one of our blue cards because at the moment we have force of will blue card force of will blue card and a daze so i think we're just going to play the mongoose here 
And then if we interact in any way, then all of a sudden we've got three threes. We, ha we are representing Stifle as well with our one blue mana here. A Dwarven Ruins and pass. So it does feel like our opponent's saving up for the Maelstrom Wanderer here. How are we supposed to deal with that? I guess we just throw all the counter spells in the world in and hope for the best. And once the first trickery resolves, we can then... Uh, technique, sorry, resolves, we can then extract it. Now we could farm for extraction now just to get more damage going. So have forcible blue card, forcible blue card, and two dazes. Oh, I hate this creative technique deck. You can see the Sakashima thingamajig here. All right, so we're going to get a cascade off. We don't have a thing for this yet. So we're going to let the demonstrate resolve and then we'll start countering spells. We might get a free counter spell off of this. And we want to counter the creative technique before their copy resolves so that we can search to extract it from their deck. So we'll let this copy resolve because that's our copy. Tarmogoyf, I will have a Tarmogoyf. We will float and then we will daze the original copy here. Then we will hit this, get rid of them all. And are we force of willingness or dazing this? I think we force of will the creative technique here, pitching another force. Then we have force of will and daze up for next turn. And do we want to counterspell the Sakashima's protege? Because this will be a Tarmogoyf. I don't think that's the end of the world. It'll be a little bit tricky for us to get through, but not impossible. We have a Merc Tide that's going to be huge. So. Then the City of Traitors. What do we have in here? Our days is probably just going into Force of Will. Now our opponent's got a decent chunk of mana over there. Maelstrom Wanderer. I guess we have to let the first Cascade resolve. This gets them a boarding party. Which then cascades into nothing. All right, and then this Maelstrom Wanderer gets a cascade going into a Phoenix, which will just cascade into nothing. How hard is the Phoenix going to be for us to beat here? They've got one mana floating, so we get to counterspell one thing. So I guess we have to counterspell the Wanderer here. This is the most problematic of these cards. So they can attack with their boarding party if they want to. We do get a massive Merc Tide, which will be able to gobble up anything. And we'll put their creatures into the, their flyers into the abyss. But we're going to probably take six here. Which is awkward, but we can block this next turn. We don't need to throw our time with away. A bauble. Not the most exciting here. So, okay, blue. Blue. Get rid of some instants here. Big old 8-8. Eight, eight. Does shrink our mongoose, but they're basically just uh, fodder at this point. Okay. We can't really attack with our Tarmogoyf. We don't have Lightning Bolts in our deck, so we don't have any reach to finish things off. Stifle is not too shabby. So you have to fire that off on something at some point. Can our opponent deploy another threat is the question. If they can't deploy a threat this turn, then we're in a good spot. If they can, then they might win. And I'll feel sad for losing to this horrible deck. I have to be careful with the amount they attack with if they are attacking. Alright, looks like they got another spell. A boarding party. Right, the Cascade won't hit anything. That's not really the problem. The problem is that it's a massive guy. So let's see how they attack here. Are they just going to send everything? No, they're going to send nothing. Interesting. We have a Stifle. Not really about that. Brainstorm I am about. Uh... I think we're more inclined to want red mana up. So let's go for one of these. Cheeky Brainstorm. Two of these cards gotta go back, so I guess it's gonna be hmm, interesting. Do I would I rather have a stifle or a channeler here? I think I'd rather have the channeler. Which means we're probably burying the trop and the stifle. Okay, so we attack with our Merktide Regent, it's the Abyss. So they have to lose the Aurora Phoenix. And they need to play uh, another creature that can block it or play enough creatures to kill us through our four blockers. So a Maelstrom Wanderer would probably do it, but I don't know they're going to be able to get the blue mana for it. Feels like we might have just about wiggled our way through this one. Somehow we're playing Delver and we're the good guys because we're not playing this deck. I say Delver, I mean Rug Threshold because we're not playing any Delvers.
All right, we got the match. Uh, we worked for it pretty hard, to be honest, uh, which shows you how annoying this deck is. Like, we had Surgical, it was a bunch of counter magic, and we still very nearly lost this game. Uh, this deck is pretty good. Like, it has some obvious weaknesses with the fact that it's all got these lands that you can just waste land away, and Blood Moon is pretty annoying. Now, they do have red creatures, but they have to have six lands in play for that, and you should usually beat them down with a Blood Moon. But yeah, this deck is... A bit of a blight on the format, because it's not really playing magic, to be honest. It's just playing one spell and letting it do its thing. All right, let's go to round two. This is a very classic Delver hand, a uh, tempo -y hand. We have Dragon's Rose Chandler protecting it with a bunch of blue stuff. We only have the one land, but our opponent doesn't necessarily know that, and wasting a Delver is not necessarily... Wasting a tempo player is not always a good idea when they've already got a threat. Right, so here's our scoring tarn. We'll crack this. Get volcanic. Play a Dragon's Race Chandler. Pass the turn. Alright. A Verdant Catacombs. What flavour of Verdant Catacombs? Oh, a green source. And a Mox Diamond. Okay. What flavour are we? Are we full on lands or are we more akin to a sort of Abzan Depths deck? Sphere of Resistance. I would like to say no to Sphere of Resistance here. Uh, this can go into our graveyard. So I'm pretty sure our opponent is on the classic, well, what has become the classic Depths build. Uh, not Depths, sorry, Lands build. Um, let's go to attacks with our Channeler here. And we're just going to play another Channeler out. This way, if we do get Wastelanded, we at least have threats in play and we've got some free spells that we can use to get there. I think given the option, we're probably going to pitch the Stifle to the Force. Right, another Mox, that's fine. I'd rather save my mana for something like... Oh, the Blast Zone's pretty good. I wish I had a Stifle right now. Yeah, that's probably game right there. This matchup is pretty horrible for poor Delver players. Right, let's get Brainstorming. Right, we've got some threats to reload with, so that's nice. Um, Lightning Bolt is probably not one we need. Wasteland is kind of an odd one, because it can sometimes be good if they've got certain problematic lands, like Maze of Ith, so I think we want to keep this around. But we do have to put something else back. Probably the Stifle. Our mana's not going to be held up, is it? But if we get rid of the Stifle, we don't have the Force available. Hmm. How much do we think the Force is important? Maybe we bury the Force and keep the Stifle? We're probably not casting that many spells apart from loam, which we can't really do much about anyway. Oh, there we go. An old school 3-3 three, three shroud. Can't maze with that one. A classic. Although this is the more recent art. I prefer the old school art, but of course I do. Okay, an expedition map. What horrors will this find? It's gonna be an Urza Saga and just start grinding out some value. That's fine. A wasteland, sure. We're going to waste sand our green source, I suspect. So it's Tarmogoyf. Not going to get there. All right, so we've drawn a waste sand of our very own. Okay, so we've got the Stifle or the Bolt available right now. So we might be able to get our opponent if they try and get some sort of waste sand action going. Life from the Loam. Yeah, it's an ugly one for us, but just stifle that, keep ourselves going for a little bit longer. Hopefully we can draw a green source this turn and deploy another threat. We did not draw that. Our opponent's probably just going to be dredging waste on it anyway. But we bought ourselves another turn to try that at least. So we can fire one of these lightning bolts at our opponent's head. That takes a turn off the clock. They're going to need some Urza Saga at some point. Let's see if they dredge into one right now. They did. Okay. But do they, do they value getting the Saga online? Because they have to work through our Wasteland. Yep, you've got some good land. The Ghost Quarter is functionally a Wasteland as well because we don't have any... All right. Let's land and bar our opponent. Not ideal. But if we draw a green source, we can deploy the Goyf. If we draw a red source, we can have Bolt up. So we have some options here. Alternatively, we could just draw a Mistress Bauble. Uh, let's just draw... Of a Duke of Bog. 
That's going to be an annoying one for our opponent to get with us with here, isn't it? Yuck. All right, we found a green source. So we can deploy the Goyf. He's not going to be massive, but he's going to be okay. We're going to have like sorcery, artifact, land, because I expect we're going to lose our graveyard this turn. Oh, no. Okay, so they found an answer to our Mongoose in the replay in the Blast Zone. But now we get to jam Tarmogoyce down our opponent's throat. Okay, it's a 5-6. It's pretty large. Obviously, we know they have the Bajuka Bog thing. We're making a good go of it. I still think we're going to lose this game, but it's going to be close either way. Yep. Goodbye, our graveyard. At least it's not going to shrink a mongoose now. So we lose two points of power on our guy. So he was a two-turn clock, and he's still a two-turn clock. Red source for the win. Um, this will put an instant in our graveyard. I would like that. Um, yeah, this is okay. We put this with this on top. We go to tax for four. Play this out. Crack this for a volcanic. Finish our opponent off with the lightning bolt. Boom. Right. Game one to us. What would we like here? I think Life from the Loam has definitely got some value here. Potentially, at least. And Stoic Extraction is for our opponent's Life from the Loam, very much so. And Meltdown to clean up their constructs and things. So these are the items I'm interested in. Days feels pretty bad in this matchup. That's covered almost all of these already. Uh, I don't really like our removal suite. So certainly not the Unholy Heat. So this is an easy five. Do we want Life from the Loams in? How useful do we think Life from the Loam is going to be? I don't think we get to... Like, if we get to surgically extract our opponent's things, then we can actually mount a pretty reasonable defense with our Life from the Loams. I'm down. I'm down to clown. So what are we going to remove to fit in these loams? Like the liner bolt doesn't seem great in this matchup, but sometimes we do need that little bit of burn. But I think that probably is what comes out. The stifle can, sorry, the spell pierce can stop some things. Would I rather have a lightning bolt than this spell pierce? I think I probably would. Spell Pierce on the draw is a lot better than Spell Pierce on the play because they basically play a spell early on and that's it. So I think we're going to roll like this. So we've got a little bit of reach in the burn spells. All right, we have two cyborg cards and a playable hand. I will keep this. We hope our opponent's all in on a life from the loam draw. Here's an expiration. We do not have the ability to counter spell this. Elvish Reclaimer. I was not expecting one of those. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, I think we have to just hold up for this stifle. How sad that is. Right, so they have an Ezra Saga. We kind of have that covered. It's Thespian Stage. Okay. A Sphere of Resistance. Yuck. Okay. We could have counted that, but I think we can try a Meltdown as our solution to that. All right, I don't mind the the wasteland here. But kind of into having Stifle available though. I think I'd rather play the Vault Count. Alright, so we have Stifle here. We have the mana to cast a Meltdown to just sweep all their tokens and their Sphere of Resistance. And the Rishdan Port, that's terrible news. Absolutely terrible news. Oh, they let us go to our main phase, that's interesting. So we'll play our wasteland here. And then we'll pass. I think this game is over already, truth be told. We're working against a lot of things here. Here comes Saga token. We'll crack this in response in case I have a pithy needle here. We can make some more lads. Go and get ourselves a trop. Our opponent can carry on being mean to us. I think this is worth stifling. I didn't really lose anything because the lamb was going anyway. But this should just give us a really nice meltdown turn because they've tapped their Rishdan port. There's a Shadow Spear. So we take four this turn, we untap, we melt down away everything. And then we start again. Oh, the Wasteland is so brutal there. Oh, that's so bad for us. Yikes. Oh, dear. So if we want to melt down, we can melt down now. So how much damage is this? This is eight, nine damage. 
We could try and find more help here. But we're going to get snagged by the Rishnan port. Yuck. Yeah, I think we have to do this now. Otherwise, we're just going to be so far behind our life total. And we can't play anything this turn due to the sphere. Yeah, maybe we should have counted the sphere early on. A bit too greedy trying to get it done with the meltdown. A crucible of worlds. All right, so our opponent's got a wasteland lock here. Yeah, I think we can... Mm, can we call it a day? Yeah, I don't want to waste my time here. All right, I think what we did was fine. These things are now... I think the spell pierce is now slightly better since we're on the play, so we can get rid of one of those. And that'll do. Some force of negations would be nice, but we don't have any in here. Okay. Um, we can keep this. We've got two sideboard cards. We can begin the game with a threat in play, which is really handy. We do kind of play this cat and mouse game of what we surgical extract. Do we just get the light from the loam, or do we just hit their wastelands? There's a lot of potential here. Right. So we're seeing a basic forest into exploration, I assume. Just a shadow spear. That's very unexciting. So we get one damage in here. Um, I'm playing the time growth out here because we're diversifying the CMC of our cards because we know they play the um, blast zone. We don't want to get caught up by that. A Yavimaya. That will certainly help us down the road, perhaps. Exploration. Interesting, I didn't play that last time. That means they must have drawn off the top this turn. There's some information there. So whatever they kept their hand on is still in their hand. Because the thing they've shown us so far wouldn't be worth keeping a hand on. Maybe exploration, but they would have played that first. All right, a rush down port. They can start porting us if they want, but we are doing all right. We've got the pressure. Hopefully they'll port down our green source. Actually, no, they won't because they've got Yavimaya, so they should always be porting down the, the, the Volk here. Yeah, our opponent has worked that one out as well. A scalding tarn. Very really matter when we play this, we'll just play it now. Attacking with these two. The question is, do we play into Blast Zone? Because they could have Blast Zone this next turn. If they do that though, then we just refuel with a Merc Tide. So I think that's fine. And they can't get rid of all of our creatures. Another port, sure. So we were right to get some extra damage down. So we're not going to have red sources, but our opponent's not really progressing their game plan. They are taking damage here. It's unfortunate that we don't have more damage coming across. If we can find any sort of cantrip, though. Glacial Chasm. What a fun one that one is. So they have to pay life to keep it around, but it stops them getting dealt damage. Life from the loam. Right, this is the spot we've been waiting for, I believe. We can strip out these life from the loams. That's probably what they kept their hand on. Right, let's get some surveils in. A wasteland. Yes, I would like that on top of my library, I believe. And yes, on top of our library. See what opponent's got in their hand as well. A veil of summer. This does not work here, but we'll let them draw a card. Because we're not targeting them or a permanent in their control, we're targeting something in their graveyard. Wait, what? Wait, what? How has that worked? Oh, sorry. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. It, what's happened here is they've drawn the card and dredged the life from the loam. That is very good. That is a great play. Sorry. A bit slow on the uptake here. All right. So we're going to lose our tropical island, but that's not the end of the world. We get to waste down this glacial chasm. And we get to bash. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can't cast our Merc Tide this turn so we just pass we've got two types in our graveyard we've got sorcery in hand which we can just fire off for delirium perhaps so we're going to see the life from the loam here getting back the glacial chasm and they can play the glacial chasm if they want they have the explorations they can certainly do some stuff but it's going to mount up the amount of life loss they take i assume they're just getting rid of the windswept teeth here Draw another wasteland and that will ruin our opponent nicely. Sure, goodbye, Tropical Island. A brainstorm. I would very much like to cast a brainstorm. Find me one of your finest wastelands. A stifle. Is that good enough here? What is that realistically going to do? 
It's not we're not we're looking for a wasteland here, just to put this game to bed. Um interesting. I think we want to keep the ponder and the brainstorm. I don't think we need the time go here. And do we want the meltdown or not? I don't think we want the meltdown in this situation. But maybe it will be useful later on. So maybe it's the Murktai that goes. And then we will cast this Ponder. Let's put the Murktide into our graveyard. So that will turn our Delirium on when this Ponder finishes resolving. Put this Mer this uh, Tarmogoyf into the graveyard. We're just looking for Wasteland. Uh, any order. Shuffle, yes. A Misty Rainforest. That's not the one, is it? Um, we can attack here, but this says prevent all damage that will be dealt to you. So that doesn't actually get us anywhere. Um, do you want to play out this Misty Rainforest? To represent some things, maybe. Uh, our Dragons of Channelers have to attack. But can we find Wasteland before our opponent finds the way to turn the corner here? There's a limited amount of time they can allow this Glacial Chasm to go, but because they've got the exploration, they can kind of rebuy it several times. Tabernacle is interesting. We have the mana to pay for our creatures. This might mean we're incentivized to brainstorm at end step. Just so we're being slightly more mana efficient as a ghost quarter. And we'll not search. Yep, so if we have an Ackle here, we need to brainstorm in the end step. Sure. And we're just looking for a wasteland in the end step. Um, I guess we take a Volk. It's diminishing returns now anyway, so. Into the graveyard with you. Into the graveyard with you. And we found the wasteland. Okay. So I guess we put these on top. It doesn't really matter at this point. And then we'll pay for all of our guys. That's all of our guys paid for. Let's waste down there, Glacial Chasm. And bash for the win. So we got a nice little 2-0 over. Was that 2-0 over? No, we scooped game two pretty quick, didn't we? Yeah, so we managed to get a nice win over Lands there. This is sometimes quite a difficult matchup. I think Rug Delver has some pretty nice tools for it. I think the Shroud on the Mongoose is actually pretty tasty here. And Tarmogoyf is just a nice big threat that they can pump quite nicely. So we just put some threats down. And Stifle can randomly turn a game as well. All right, we are 2-0. Let's go to round three. Yeah, seems like a pretty serviceable Delver hand. We've got pressure into Cantrix to find the answers. Thought scenes. Our hand's relatively redundant. Right, they'll probably take the Channeler. Unless they have a Bowmasters. Alright, so they might have a Bowmasters in hand. This means we can lead out with a Ponder here. So we're looking for maybe some more pressure here. Uh, we do not want these. Alright, a uh, Brainstorm. I don't really want to have to daze anything this turn. Because I'd like to stick the Katama Wife. A Dark Ritual. Okay. Four drops are the scary ones, so we have a daze for a four drop. A Grief. Yeah, that's probably worth dazing here. Our opponent's two lands ahead of us, though, but they've only got three cards in hand, so we don't have that much to work through. Okay, we can play a threat here. It's not quite thresholded, but we are getting there. So we can put two more cards into our graveyard quite easy next turn, and possibly a third if we want to. If we want to do lots of brainstorming stuff. Cycling a Street Wraith. Right, so we're going to get griefed here, which is not ideal, but it does put another card in our graveyard. So this means we can get Threshold this turn quite easily. Um, I would like to cast this Dragon's Rage Channel before doing a Brainstorm, but I think for the purposes of making our Brainstorms good, we don't want to do that. Right, so we'll get rid of this and... How much do I think Stifle is going to be use useful this match? So we're going to play this, get a Volk, play this guy. And then we untap next turn with what Brainstorm available. I think we want the Bauble just so we can fix our draws for next turn. Stifle is a blue card, but St Nimble Mongoose is just another threat. Which I think is a Stifle here. Crack this. Nimble Mongoose is now active. We can play out our channeler, get some value with our scrying. Uh, I will leave this on top of our library, please. 
Okay, so we're not going to crack this. Um, I guess our opponent can have Bowmasters it regardless. But our creatures don't really care for Bowmasters. If they want to trade their 4 drop for my 3 drop, that's fine. I think we'll crack the Bauble in our opponent's turn. So that our Lightning Bolt is saved from... Another thing with our deck that's quite good is that we are... Our threats do not care about Pyroblast. Pyroblast not actually that good against our deck. It's pretty cool. We've got these Veil of Summons in our sideboard that I'm very much looking forward to ruining our opponent's day with in the post sideboard games. Okay, Verdant Catacombs. Okay, so our opponent might be on the the Green Black Death Shadow deck with Wither Bloom Apprentice combo. I've seen a fair bit of that lately. So that would explain the Verdant Catacombs here. That's quite important information for us. If their hand is Dark Ritual, Wither Bloom Apprentice, Mausoleum Secrets. Yeah, this card is very good in my opinion. It's instant speed demonic tutor most of the time. If you haven't bought them, you should probably should. If you like playing black. I found the Wither Bloom Apprentice. Alright. Let's take a card here. So we have an answer for Wither Bloom Apprentice in hand now. We've got Troll on top, sure. I'm not sure we want to do anything with this um, brainstorm. I think we just want to play the Mongoose out now. So our opponent is dead next turn, so they're probably just going to have to go for it now. And we do have the Lightning Bolt to get there. It should ruin our opponent's day. We'll let them mind twist their own hand away first, and then we'll kill the guy. So they gain a little bit of life, but that shouldn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Right, they're Swamp Cycling their Troll, that we knew about. And there's a Swamp, I suspect this is coming into play right now. There it is. Okay, we just have the kill in hand. With the bolt now. Even better. Nimble Mongoose. My friend. Kapow. Right. So now we get to play these Veil of Summers that I've been looking forward to. These Surgery Extractions also pretty interesting, as is Grafticker's Cage. I think they are a combo deck. So it kind of incentivizes us to have counter spells. But counter spells don't seem great here. Uh, Witherbloom Apprentice is drains from each opponent, I think. Yes, each opponent. I just thought I would check. So, Dazes become Veils and Cage, probably. And then, how good is Stifle in this matchup? We can Stifle a Grief Trigger. That's quite nice. We can Stifle Swamp Cycling. I think Stifle looks good here. Not convinced by this Spell Pierce. And do we want... How much do we want counter spells? I don't think we want to be the two for one counter spell deck too much here. Maybe I'm wrong, but we'll find out. That's why we're testing. Uh, we have a threat. We have an answer. We have a wasteland that's unlikely to do much, but it's possible. This is about keepable. Our opponent being on the play is obviously bad news for us. Because they get first crack at our hand here. A street race. Agadim the Undercrypt. A reanimate on a street race. That's not too threatening. We could waste them off of this if we wanted to. But I think we want to play our mongoose out here. And start in with a threat. We now have forcible blue card up. We can't kill the street race with our bolt, which is unfortunate. Our prince deck is full of basic swamps. So I'm not expecting our wasteland to be very good here. And I don't think you can realistically snap off a wasteland when your opponent's got a three power attacker in play and that puts you down to no permanence in play. I just don't think that's a, a winning line. A marsh flats, sure. There's the bayou, that's something that we can wasteland. An assassin's trophy on our We've got a lot of land. I'm not I don't really mind. We will not shuffle this. We don't have any basics. Like if they're playing sinkhole, that's not a great Magic the Gathering card. Alright. If they want to do some trade in here. But they can come in at three. We can come in for less than three. Um, we have some choices here. I quite like holding up Stifle here. Stifle or Lightning Bolt. It gives us some hefty options. And then we can worry about doing things like Wasteland afterwards. A Dark Ritual. We have a counter spell for whatever comes on the other side of this. An Orcish Bowmasters. How much do we care about Orcish Bowmasters? 
I think this is worth counterspelling. Is it worth stifling the trigger though? I think it might be worth stifling the trigger though. Right, our brainstorm's here for force of will now, rather than drawing cards. All right, I got Withery and Prentice, sure. Not enjoying how much damage our opponent has though. That's a real burden on us. We're gonna have to find some Merc Tides or something. And Agadim, the Undercity. Prince got one card in hand. We've got a Stifle. Would we rather waste our opponent's Bayou? Or would we rather hold up Stifle and Lightning Bolt? I think it's Stifle and Lightning Bolt. This does also give us the ability to get Threshold this turn. Which might be relevant. There's a Swamp. Just kill this with a Ruin Princess. That's why Lightning Bolt was always going to be useful. And I think we just have to allow this to hit us. Again. Surgical Extraction. So we've got four cards in our library. Five, sorry, in our graveyard, four cards. Five, six, seven. So we can get rid of this. Do we want to get one more damage in this turn? Oh, sorry, two more damage in this turn. At the cost of two of our lives. That will give us potential Lightning Bolt to win the game with. That gives our opponent a two-turn clock. In order to do this, we'd have to get rid of something in our opponent's deck. Is there anything here that we actually care about? I guess we can get rid of the Withering Printer and not have to care about the combo for the rest of the game. That's probably fine. I don't particularly like this play. But we put our opponent to five. And then it gives us draws to win the game next turn. Okay, they have this member in hand. That's good to know about. We put our opponent to five. So they they probably just swing with the Wraith here and hold back the Bowmasters. All right, so they do a land for turn. That doesn't do anything here. So I think they swing with the they either swing with the Wraith or swing with the Bowmasters. I prefer the aggressive line of swinging with the Wraith and jumping with the Bowmasters. But we'll see what they opt for. They could swing with both. Right, they're gone for the conservative line of swinging with that guy. That's less exciting to me. A ponder. It's not really one we want to cast right now, is it? We can cast it and then stifle their trigger if we really care about it. I think we... Oh dear. That's a tough one. Right, we do need some business here. I think... They won't attack with just their Street Wraith, I don't think. Although it does become a two-turn clock. But then they have to chomp with the Bowmasters. Yeah, no, I think they might have it here. We can chomp block the Street Wraith later on if we need to. We will just take the three here. So now what are we doing? Here we cast the Ponder here. And we can stifle the Bowmaster trigger when we draw our one card. If we have tapped our mana the other way. But this is in any order. Shuffle your library, yes. That has to go away. And then we shut off our opponent having Grief. By getting rid of one of their lands. And now we have to chop block with our Mongoose. The little Street Wraith that could... They do have this dismember that we might need to worry about. But they probably swing with both creatures here. Because we have to chump block the Street Wraith. Our opponent's going to four. Which is importantly not three. A Dark Ritual. Another Street Wraith. Okay, that's not what we care about here. Uh, what is our out here? What is our out here? Anything we have on? I was kind of holding the brainstorm because we can brainstorm and then in response to the triggers do something, but... Alright. For the next game, I think we're in a much better spot because we're on the play. So I think we just submit like this. We could play Cast into Fire for Bowmasters, actually. Over this force. Maybe that's okay. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand can stifle and have surgical extraction, and then we can ponder into some stuff. That seems fine. I think we hold up the Stifle for turn one rather than playing anything out. It's pretty telegraphed that we have a Stifle here. I don't think we just Stifle anything. I think we're just trying to save this for like a Grief activation or something this turn. Exactly like this. And I would like a Volcanic Island here. Let's Stifle this Discard Trigger. They're going to cast Reanimate and just let us save extract it. Sure, our opponent's probably not going to be happy with that one. What a hand. Okay, their hand is pretty bad now as well. 
So what have we got here? Four Witherboom Apprentice. One Chain of Smog. So they just have this as a chooser target for their Mausoleum Secrets. They're running three of those. But full four Bowmasters. Sure, the full four Trolls. One Trophy, one Abrupt Decay. So using more... Okay, snuff that as well, sure. Now we can go back to playing Ordinary Magic. Doing Ponders and just getting by. Okay. Um, I would like these cards. I'm going to put this... And we're going to need the Mystery Rainforest if we want to cast the Dragon's Rage Channeler. Uh, if we want to cast the... Oh, gosh, next turn. Interesting. So we're definitely having the Channeler and playing the Channeler this turn off of our Volcanic Island. So next turn, we draw Misty Rainforest. We can ponder into the Tarmogoyf and then crack it. So I guess we put Tarmogoyf, Misty, Channeler. One, two, three. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we've got three card types here. So we have to worry a little bit about our opponent's ability to make the Plague Engineer because it can kill our Chandler. So maybe we want to put it into our Graveyard. Right, so they're cycling the Street Wraith. But if they play out a non-basic here, then we can keep them off for a turn. Right, so play the Delta smartly. What is this? We didn't see any Dowthy Voidwalkers in our opponent's deck as well, which is interesting. There's a Bite, okay. There's going to be a Witherbloom Apprentice, sure. So I think we need to mill our opponent's land. Uh, our, our, we need to mill the top card of our library here. So And kill our opponent's land. I'm thinking too many things at once here. So we do this. We put the Tarmogoyf into the graveyard here. Sorry, Tarmogoyf. This will give our creature protection from that problem. Right, then we can waste our opponent off a of bayou. We can cast a Ponder and set ourselves up for next turn to do something good. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, Channeler, Brainstorm. I guess we go Brainstorm at the bottom, then the Channeler, then the Extraction. This way, if we need to stop them reanimating something like a Street Wraith, we can do that. And we have another threat next turn. Agadim, tapped or untapped opponent? Tapped. All right, so this turn we draw the threat, and then underneath that is a brainstorm to keep the party going. Which is why I'm not going to play this fetch land out. Dragon's Race Channel, what a card. Absolute workhorse. Right, a swamp. So we know two of the cards in our opponent's hand. This will reduce our clock by two. So we're going to be attacking for four. But that's fine by me. Now we can brainstorm in peace here. Let's see a million cards this turn. Another channeler. Um, sure, I guess. Just keep the hits coming, I suppose. So two of these cards have got to go back. So we could put back the Surgical and the Misty. And that just gives us so much protection. Because we can deploy this. Bash in our opponent for four. And next turn we bash in for six. And we have Force of Will Blue card up. Troll of Khazad Doom. Sure. Not one they want to reanimate, that's for sure. I don't think they want to re reanimate anything here. That's why the Force of Bills work better in the Surgical here. I will happily... Second main phase, I think we... No, we don't need to play into Bowmasters, do we? We just got Force of Blue card and six power in play. Let's not get greedy. I thought we could ponder into a Lightning Bolt. But if we cast Ponder and our opponent has an Orcish Bowmasters... Alright, we are 3-0! Absolutely sailing. Deck feels pretty good. One of the things I'm thinking that we might want to change is possibly having a tar fire over one of the um, Mishra's Baubles. I think that sounds quite good, but we'll see how the last two games go. But we're already on a re winning record, so let's keep it rolling. Our hand is a little bit awkward, but we have a Ponder, so I'd rather play the Channeler, but we can hopefully find what we're looking for. Wowzers Trousers. We got there. Volcanic. Play Dragon's Rage Channeler. Play Mishra's Bauble. Uh, this can go into our graveyard. I think we want to see what our opponent's doing. If they're playing Grixis, they might have a Bowmaster, so we want to get our door off before then. A Dark Ritual. Okay. Um, my Storm Sense is tingling. A Brainstorm. Sure. 
that's fine. So this feels like the epic storm. That's sort of the brainstorm fetch land storm deck that has... Well, I suppose it could be uh, Ant as well. So far, the cards we've seen are in both decks. Badlands, okay. This feels a lot more like the Epic Storm. I don't think... Because it needs the... It plays Ponder and stuff in Ad Nauseam Tendrils. It doesn't usually have the Badlands. Wishclaw Talisman. Is this worth me making them pay mana with the days? I can kill their Lotus Pearl. I don't think that's worth it. As sad as that is. I think we might need a lot of mana to try and ponder around next turn. A Mox Opal. Okay. So now they have Metalcraft. I don't think a Daze is going to be enough to get us there. So I think we need to find a little bit more. A Wasteland. That cuts them off of one mana. That's not unacceptable. It makes our Daze better in our hands. I'll put this on top and then we'll decide when, the, when we see the rest of the cards of the ponder. So, we can take the Wasteland, take them off of a mana now, have a Brainstorm for next turn. I think that's better than trying to fish for a random Force of Will right now. All right, Black Mana is probably going to be more annoying for them. We only get one damage in this turn, though, which is sad. If we'd have dazed that Wishclaw, we'd have had one more damage. But our opponent know we kept off a Ponder, so they probably don't want to go until they can do it around what we're doing. I have to imagine we had some kind of um, force of will type effect because we we kept a card on top with Channeler and we kept our Ponder on top. So that suggests that we've got something that we think is good enough to beat them, which isn't strictly speaking true. So next turn we can turn our Channeler into something a bit bigger by brainstorming. We've got two drops to put back as well. So we should get a nice fix on our hand, provided we don't die this turn. All right, our opponent's cracking to shuffle away their brainstorm. Are they just going to be doing some more pondering or what? A bite. Yeah, this is definitely feeling like Epic Storm. The Wish Call Talisman is a little bit of a giveaway as well. Oh dear, what are we looking at here? A Burning Wish. Sure. What is this going to be? Appear into the Abyss. Understood, opponent. All right, here comes our brainstorm. Let's fix our hand, please. That's not the one. Put into Graveyard. This will make our guy bigger, but we always be made bigger by the Brainstorm as well. So. Stifle, I don't hate, but it's not fantastic, is it? Let's play this out. We go attacks. I think the Stifle on the Wish Core Talisman is probably going to be better than Pondering here. So I know they got Peer into the Abyss, which is an expensive spell, so countering it with a Daze is certainly possible. I'm just going to poke a hole with the Thought Thieves. We're going to start with the Veil of Summer. We do daze the Veil of Summer if that's what we do. We should have cracked our fetch in our turn because now we have to wait to the right timing of them to activate their Wishclaw Talisman before we can crack it. Another Wishclaw Talisman. Sure. Three cards. One of them is Dark Ritual. One of them is Peer into the Abyss. Right, so we'll crack this now. We're going to get ourselves a Tropical Island. I think casting a Ponder here is good. Let's see what we find with it. Uh, I don't think we want a Mongoose. We're just looking for counter magic, really. Merktide region, any order, shuffle. Another Ponder. Do you want to cast another Ponder and hold up? Stifle, or do we want to just get more damage in play? So if we play this guy, we have a two-turn clock. If we play the Ponder, we don't have a two-turn clock, but we might be able to Stifle and get something going. This is a tough choice. I think we're supposed to cast the channeler this turn. Because otherwise we end up in a similar dilemma next turn. And we just hold open the stifle here. They might think they'll get away with a Veil of Summer. But Veil of Summer doesn't stop abilities from being countered. Just spells. So we might be able to nab them with a Wish Call Talisman. Activation. And then we can... Activate the Wish Call Talisman on our turn to get in the second Lightning Bolt and kill them. Ad Nauseam is not a particularly good line for them right now. Post board, we're going to get some Meltdowns. Right, activating their Wish Call Talisman. Is this when I Stifle? 
or do I wait for the next one? So they get something thinking that this one is going to work. I think we stifle the second one because they're definitely going to activate the other one in a second. I don't believe they're going to have thoughts these main decks, but they might do. That might be what they chewed for here. A Rite of Flame. Sure. A Dark Ritual. This will take them up to five mana. This will take them up to enough for... Yeah, this will be enough for a... Um, appearance of this here. We can always stifle the Storm Trigger on a Tendrils. So if they pay for this, they'll have three mana in their pool, and then they'll gain an additional three mana, and they'll still have enough to appear into the abyss here. So it's probably not going to make too much of a difference, unfortunately. But we get Veil of Summer, and we get Meltdown for the post-board games, which should be pretty good. Time to go in the graveyard. Force of Will. I guess it doesn't really matter. I think they're going to pay here. We might as well. So now they crack their Lotus Petal and they have enough to cast a Peer into the Abyss. If they try and crack their Whiskle Talisman for something to help them out, then we can strike with our Stifle. If they think they have to play around a Daze, I think they're just going to put the Peer into the Abyss in the stack though. So we're going to be hoping our Stifle can deal with their Storm Trigger and hope they miss that. Their Life Total is not low enough that we're going to be able to kill them with this Lightning Bolt at some point. Yep, so here comes the Peer into the Abyss. Oh no, change their mind. Oh, now we get them. No no wish for talisman for you. And now they don't have enough mana for Peer into the Abyss unless they have another piece of mana in hand. A Burning Wish with three mana. So this could be a Galvanic Relay, which would be fine because we kill our opponent on the next turn. They don't know that though. Go and get a Galvanic Relay and pass a turn. Well, cast it and then pass a turn. There we go, there's a Galvanic Relay. All right, we've got this game. Let's see what they reveal here. Sorry, this is their reveal pile here, isn't it? Uh, it's in the exile zone, isn't it? Many Burning Wishes. Oh no, there's the two Burning Wishes already exiled, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty poor Galvanic Relay. Our Stifle absolutely coming in clutch there. I love Stifle, but only in very specific decks. Let's attack with these two guys. Our opponent to 12. Go and get a Lightning Bolt. Upstairs with one. Upstairs with the second one. Boom. All right. We're cruising here, aren't we? So our opponent's deck looked very much like the Epic Storm rather than Adnorsum Tendrils. So Veil of Summer and Meltdown are both very useful cards in this matchup. We want to keep all of our counter magic. I do not believe we want our burn spells here. So that's a pretty straight swap of cards here. Pyroblast can hit their Brainstorms, which is okay. And they might have like an Echo, but they're rarely going to be able to fire the Echo off um, without uh, by give, with giving us a window. So the chances are that it's just going to be... They put the thing in the graveyard immediately and then wheel. We could stop that with a Graph Digger's Cage. If that's the thing we're really interested in. Is that better than one of these Mishra's Baubles? Just to stop that one card. Whereas Mishra's Bauble is just going to help our general game plan. And we're going to be meltdowning anyway. No, I think we just have a look at this. Board out our burn spells. Board in our things that ruin our opponent up. Alright, Veil of Summer. Days. A threat. Pretty happy with this hand. I don't have any turn one inter or turn zero interaction. But them's be the break sometimes. We will keep this. Our opponent's mulligan to six so far. Our opponent's mulligan to five. The storm decks can mulligan pretty aggressively. Their whole deck is just built to keep sort of building momentum. They're not like just trying to go for one big turn necessarily. They have a few turns that then snowball into better turns. We can draw meltdown. We did not draw meltdown. Okay, I will just play out a tropical island and pass, holding up Veil of Summer. Our opponent can't really win through Veil of Summer. So it's a very useful tool to have. All right. Let's start pondering. Dragon's Race Channeler. We can start getting to work with that next turn. We probably do want this land. So brainstorm on the bottom. Then the land. Then the Channeler. We'll not shuffle our library. And we'll pass. All right. Nothing from our opponent. 
My hand is pretty reasonable. I don't think we need to play the things out just yet. So in comes the channeler. We can brainstorm on our opponent's end step if we want to. But right now we have forcible blue card, veil of summer, days. We are doing all right. Okay, we finally found a land. Uh, we have a brainstorm on top of our library. I'm happy to draw that. So I think this turn we will cast a brainstorm. We can probably turn these brainstorms into things that are better than brainstorm. We just want to grow the channel as well. Uh, we'll put this into our graveyard. Merktide region. The bauble will give us our guy here. So I think we put the Merktide regent and then the ponder. Then we play this. And ponder can go into the graveyard. It's got opponent's drawing. Uh, do I want Merktide Regent? We have five cards in our graveyard. This will be six, seven next turn when we attack. I think I'm happy to deploy the Nimble Mongoose here. Kicking it old school. The one good thing about playing Dragon's Race Channeler is that it doesn't let you skip your attack step, which I have definitely done on occasion by accident. A Stifle, another excellent draw. I don't think we're stifling this fetch land. We have Wish Core Talismans to Stifle or Storm Triggers, which is just a lot more profitable. If they brainstorm and then try and crack a fetch hand, it becomes more tempting for us because we get to brainstorm lock them for two turns. A Veil of Summer, you say. Interesting, if true. I think we say no to the Veil of Summer. Here. This will also grow our guy. Uh, this is pretty good. Uh, do you want another stifle? Yes, I think we do. So they can just fire those out as testers. That's going to be pretty strong. It's going for six. We've got three turn clock here. Uh, I don't think we want to brainstorm here. We've got Stifle, Stifle, Veil of Summer, and Days for Interaction. That is a lot. And just to confirm this, so spells you control can't be counted this turn. But activated abilities and triggered abilities can. So Stifle is going to be doing some amazing work. If we play the Tarmogoyf, it doesn't affect our clock because we have six damage here and six damage next turn. So we're not going to tap low for that when we have three pieces of interaction we can cast. We also have an emergency brainstorm if something really pops off. They're cracking a bloodstained mire. Sure. Okay, and these stifles can hit the storm trigger or they can hit something else. Okay, a rite of flame. Sure. A dark ritual. Sure. A burning wish, you say. Um, that's interesting. And they're thinking about cracking their Lion's Eye Diamond here. They have cracked their Lion's Eye Diamond. So we will float a blue and try and make them pay more for this. So you can stay on top. Why not? No more the merrier. So they're going to have five mana available here. What does that get them? Is this like a mini tendrils? Or an empty the warrens? One sorcery. And we get to see what it is, and then we can decide if we need to crack a brainstorm, or hold open these stifles, or veil of summer. It should be difficult for us to lose this game, but you never know. Tendrils of agony, sure. Yeah, we're not gonna. We don't even have to show them the stifles. So another victory. We are four and zero, heading our way into trophy match with good old-fashioned Canadian threshold. Let's see if we can get the trophy. All right, into the trophy round. We have a pretty good hand i would say here we have channeler into bauble holding up days we can keep this we've got some reasonable interaction we get to see a fair few cards a bauble from our opponents what flavor of bauble deck are they are they eight cast are they delver all right that looks very delvery to me wouldn't mind drawing a um stifle here we did not draw a stifle Hmm, interesting. Do we just wasteland their wasteland and then just go back to square one again? Maybe. We're going to save our ball before we play our channeler. Sure. Uh, they're making the play that I was thinking about making anyway. And that the fact that they've done it gives us more information. Underground C, okay. So we're looking at probably Grix's tempo here. So now we will see if the innovations I've attempted in this deck to try and be good against the blue-black style decks are going to come to fruition for us. It could also be... Um, no, it's, it's definitely going to be Grixis, right? The baubles are the giveaway here. Here's Dragon's Race Channeler. Here's our bauble. Look at that value. Tarmogoyf. 
This is a creature for our graveyard, but it's also a big thing that might be difficult for them to answer. I think we leave this on top. And we will draw this turn. We will activate this now so we can draw in their upkeep so we don't get bowmastered on the extra draw. They will get to see what we've kept as well, because they have a ball in play. They have an underground C incoming. It's not that exciting. All right, they kept their bauble in play. That's interesting. Okay, they got a fetch down. They want to... Okay, no, I thought they wanted to do the, the whole fetch down play there. Orcish Bowmasters. Do we care about this enough? I think so. Let's bounce this and try and daze them. Now, if they had you daze back here, that's pretty bad for us. Um, do you want this daze? We're diminishing returns right now. I think we'll put it into our graveyard. Nope, we just got the counter off. Excellent. Okay. So we've got land, instant artifact. So we're very incentivized here to play our ponder. Especially since their bowmaster shields are down. Uh, okay, we'll put this into our graveyard as well. We don't really want these cantrips against their bowmaster deck. I do like these though. So I think we put Stifle on the bottom, then the channeler, and pocket the days in our hand. And then we at least have a little bit of protection going into the next turn. And then we can untap, slam a Tarmogoyf. And that should be pretty large. Sure, we'll let them have the brainstorm here. This means if they're playing a two drop, we're more likely to be able to counter it with the days. And we kind of want to use our days to counter scary things. The fact that we managed to get that bow martyrs with the days is really good. Right, there's the underground sea that we knew about from earlier. A dragon's raised channeler, sure. A delver of secrets. Nope, that's fine. Our time is going to be bigger. Or we can play our own Dragon's Race channel and hold up a Spell Pierce. Hmm. I think I want to just play a Tarmogoyf. It's a 5-6. It's huge. There's a debate whether I play that first or second main. But I think we get the kill on their Dragon's Race channel more likely if I play this first. And I'm kind of going to try and kill it. That's what I want there. Because we have a follow-up threat. So we trade one for one. That's better for us, I think. And we've got a decent grip of our cards here. A petty theft on our little guy. That's sad. A ponder. Sure, you can have that. The efficacy of this daze is definitely falling apart. So if we'd have played the Dragon's Race channel last turn, you'd have held up the Spell Pierce. But this turn we get to play Tarmogoyf with daze and Spell Pierce up. Okay, now we don't get to do that. We get to play Tarmogoyf with daze up. Our opponent's got two cards in hand. Tarmogoyf is enormous. They've got two cards in hand. Sure. Our clock is superior to our opponents. We've got Shouldred's Edict over there. This day is just rotting away in our hand. A Merktide Regent. That is a problem for us. It's a 6-6. Six, six. Interesting. I think this looks like not attacking here. And then we deploy another Tarmogoyf and a Channeler. And the Channeler is going to be on blocking duty. Brainstorm, sure. So if they attack now, we can chump block and then swing back for 10. But then they will potentially have us dead the turn after. Or we can trade off with the Insectile Aberration and then it's the same deal. So we're going to need our Brainstorm to do a little bit of work on our turn. Mystic Sanctuary putting a Brainstorm on top. That's fine. It does grow their Regent, but this doesn't actually matter. The extra one point of damage, I don't believe. Let's see what they go for here. So we have two options available to us. We have the aggressive line of take seven, swing back for 13, try and get them with a the lightning bolt. Or we have the defensive line here of block, swing for a little bit, take seven on the next turn, but then they can just insert town aberration. Both ways we're looking for, for a lightning bolt, but this way we're looking for multiple. So I think we do block here, as sad as that is. We have the days to cover the brazen borrower. Delver of Secrets, okay, that's pretty good. What is this? All right, our opponent's got something over there. I'm excited about. Uh, we do have to cast this Brainstorm, and I think we have to do off this Tropical Island. And we're gonna see a Orcish Bowmasters, I believe. No to that. Finding a use of a daze at this late stage of the game. Okay, what does this need to be? An Unholy Heat. This doesn't deal enough damage, does it? But we can play our own Merktide as an 8-8 eight, eight, and have an unholy heat. So we put back this and I guess we put back the force. Not really what we're doing right now. 
which one of these goes back first is the question. Um, would we like to play Tarmogoyf and Spellpiss next turn? I think so. Let's put Force on the bottom and then Tarmogoyf. Okay, so if we kill this with an Unholy Heat, then we bash. So we play a Trop and we play the biggest Merc type we can. So Unholy Heat, Brainstorm, Daze, try and hit all the instants if possible. Well, not all of them. Uh, enough so that we don't take card types out so we can keep our time goes as big as possible. So we now have the biggest creature, the second biggest creature, and the th oh yes! Yes! We got there! Whew. I wasn't sure that was going to work. Alright, so Veil of Summers, in. Pyroblast, in. Now, back in the day, we used to play Life from the Loam in the mirror, along with Surgic Extraction to just ruin our opponent's stuff. I think technology's moved on since then. But it is an interesting one. So I don't think we want dazes and I don't think we want forces here. So we can get rid of those. Which does leave us with two spaces, which could be life from the loam. Or we could have a cast into the fire and one life from the loam. That seems pretty good. Uh, how useful is stifle in this matchup? We can stifle a bunch of their lands. We can stifle Mertad Regent triggers. We can stifle Bowmaster triggers. I think this seems fine. I'm not sure if we need four stifles though. I think maybe we want the second loam over the fourth stifle. Sure, I'm going to roll this. You don't really want two for one removal when your opponent's got things like Pyroblast in their deck. So the um, we don't want a two for one ourselves using Force of Will when we can just use Veil of Summer and Pyroblast of our own. This has pretty gas. I'll keep this. Let's see what they lead out on. Underground Sea into Ponder. Okay, I am going to Wasteland our opponent, I think. Are we? Or do we just want to get our threat down? Depends what we draw, I suppose. Are we drawn? Hmm. I think I want... I don't really want to just play my guy out into Bow Martyrs right now, though. I'm going to get a Volk and pass. Weirdly. Our Dragon's Race channel just going straight into their Bow Martyrs is sort of the difference between the play and the draw. Are we... Waste are we... I think we are here. Let's give them the old stifle business. How do you like them apples? A daze. Sure, we will not pay. We traded a stifle for a daze, and that sets our opponent back on land. If you get to make a two drop this turn, I imagine it's, oh no, it's blue and blue. Okay, We're casting a ponder, sure. So we know they've got an underground sea in hand. Another ponder, sure. We can cut our opponent off of red, and then deploy our Dragon's Rage Channeler. I'm a fan of that strategy. I'd love to draw a land, to be honest. Not a land, all right. I think we take out the Volk. Now we can deploy our channeler without any fear of Bowmasters hitting it this turn. And we have got land and instant. So we have sorcery in our hand that we can play next turn. And all right, so a different land from our opponent here, which means they need the red. It's going to be a lightning bolt on our Dragon's Rage channeler or a channeler of their own. Okay, Devil's Secrets, sure. I would love to find a land right now. Not a land. I think we cast the ponder looking for a land. We found the land. Put it on top of our library, please. I would like to have a red land, ideally. Um, so we put the tropical land into our hand, the Tarmogoyf at the bottom, then the mongoose. Yeah, sure. So then we play this out, and then we cast our other ponder. We scry away the mongoose. This gives us th uh, delirium, and we said threshold then. I have a Merkside region if we want it. We have a Tarmgoyf, which is the thing I'm most looking for next turn. I would like this Misty Rainforest as well. So the Merkside region is the thing that gets buried here. I think we put the Tarmgoyf and then the Misty in case our opponent's running Thought Seizes. Now we get the first crack at our opponent's life total here. We have two Lightning Bolts and two Tarmgoyfs. So we've got a lot of threats here. We can also start Wasteland locking our opponent. But I think I'd rather get a Goyf in play first. All right, a Wasteland from our opponent. Lightning Bolt on our guy. And a Wasteland, sure. What do we think our opponent has here? I think we just want to strip away their threat. But if they have a follow-up guy, we kind of want our threat in play first. I think we are just going to... Hmm, do we take the hit here? Take, do we make our guy? Or do we take the life from the loam and just secure our future that way? I think I would like this life from the loam. 
This is a very horrible target for them to daze because we can get it back if we want to. All right, so we have a wasteland in our hand. We've just drawn three. That's pretty powerful. And we can just wasteland our opponent out of the game over the next few turns. Channeler, sure. Take three off this guy. We would not want to dredge this this turn. All right, we want our wasteland first. Let's wasteland there, C. We're casting a brainstorm in response. Three cards in our opponent's hand. Do we just want to make some big guys, or do you want to slow down their roll? Or do you want to play our own guy? It's a case of do we want to be mana efficient this turn or not? So we can lightning bolt around a daze, and then next turn we can do some more shenanigans. I like lightning bolting around daze here. Because we've got another lightning bolt, we're going to target the one that's definitely hitting us for three next turn. All right. Doesn't feel like our opponent's boarded in thought seizers or anything here. I'm going to take three here. I'll take Slap and Malone back. Not for now, but for later. So I think step one is... I think step one is play a Misty Rainforest. So we can play around Spell Pierce, if that's the thing our opponent has. Let's bolt the Chandler. And I want to get some value off of the Chandler first, and maybe find a solution to this problem. Cracking a Misty Rainforest. A Lightning Bolt. Sure. Right, now, so now we're going to get ourselves another Volcanic Island. And we're going to play our big boy. Got days for this or anything? No. Okay. So next turn we can start wasteland locking our opponent. We can waste. We can get back a wasteland, play a channeler, and wasteland them all in the same turn. And that's going to be quite potent, I would imagine. Brazen borrower. Okay. A brainstorm. I think brainstorm is going to be better than anything else right now, isn't it? Um, we have a trop in hand, so I'm going to use this trop here because if we find. A red spell. We're going to want to do red spell things. Um, hmm. Not really into these cards, unfortunately. Um, has the time for this Tarmogoyf gone? We could just play Tarmogoyf and Chandler and just send the beats in. That sounds okay to me. So we want to keep this, which means we're bottoming these things. So I think we put the Tarn and then the Loam. And then we play our Dragon's Race Channeler, play this, we will put this into our graveyard. It's not really about that anymore. Oh wow, we got it! We got the trophy! Excellent! So, <laughs> a little while back, I played a 10-year-old build of Rug Delver, and we got the trophy. So this was a deck I used to play a lot, so obviously I had a lot of reps on that specific build. And we got a trophy and it was great. Then, a little bit later, I played a uh, more up-to-date Rug Devil build. So it wasn't Stifles, it was like, uh, you know, just good spells, basically. And I think I went 3-2 or something, and then just didn't get on with it, because I'm not used to that. And then today, we play classic Canadian Threshold with some of my own changes to it. So, you know, Chandler, Mongoose, a couple of Merc Ties. So I kind of made the change I said I would at the, last, at the end of the last video. And I will link that previous video in the description. But yeah, pretty happy with how this turned out. In terms of testing for my big event, this is quite a positive sign. Let's talk about the deck. So I think my logic with some of the things I've changed with this deck have been somewhat validated. Say, so obviously, one league isn't necessarily the be all and end all, but it is really important testing still. And we did play against. A bunch of proper decks along the way you know we had the epic storm and we had delver and things so i'm not unhappy with how the deck performed at all well obviously we, we trophied but i think we also played quite well for it and we sort of showcased why nimble mongoose is good we had a game against our mostly black opponent who couldn't remove the mongoose for a number of turns and it was really handy also, Tarmogoyf just being a big guy was nice, but I do think having some Merc Tides in. But by only having two Merc Tides, we're not doing the thing where you add loads of cards to your graveyard and then remove them constantly, like you sometimes see with some of the Delver builds. Like, once upon a time, people were running Hooting Mandrills in Rug Delver, and it just felt really weird running things like Mongoose and Tarmogoyf and then removing your own graveyard. So instead, we're just filling our own graveyard with the Channeler and all of our spells, and the synergy there is working really nicely. What I will say is, given the prevalence of Orcish Bowmasters these days, I think one of these baubles should be a Tar Fire. Because having another burn spell is nice, but also it's a burn spell 
that you know will hit the creature and also you don't have to draw a card because if you're sort of behind and you need to deal with the bowmasters having a ball ball in play is useless whereas a tar fire is pretty good so i'd probably make that change because then you end up with the same amount of things that can um the, the same amount of types well you actually end up with one more type right so you can end up with slightly bigger goys and slightly easier to get dragon's race channeler so i think that's probably where i get, would go for the next change uncertain if we need the spell pierce that's something that you could look at and change could even be the singleton veil of summer given the meta these days is so black heavy but i'm not entirely sure about that so yeah pretty happy with this uh, this is one of the shortlist decks for my uh european legacy masters invitation that i'm going to i think it's 116 player invite only tournament um there's like qualifiers and stuff so i'm really looking forward to that and this is very much on my shortlist i think it performed really well today and the sideboard i think the sideboard makes sense like the loam strategy i think definitely has some merit now maybe two is too much we did at the beginning say we were playing two because we wanted to test it and see if it was good but in terms of our numbers when we were boarding against Delver, it was perfect to have two life from the loam in and if you get in these grindy matchups you just take away all your opponent's ability to play the game you dredge this for a few times and then once you've got a few wastelands underneath you that's it and we can play some pretty hefty threats that outclass theirs and then wasteland the world from underneath them and it's also another proactive way of trying to stop merc ties by just keeping their land count down as for the rest of the sideboard um yeah seemed seemed fine i think veil of summer is so strong at the moment that it definitely does make me want to play rug and yeah i don't really have anything else to say about it i was just really happy with how this panned out today and important testing that actually goes well makes you feel pretty happy about things yeah canadian threshold in 2023 i've uh back-to-back -back trophies with it so what a time to be alive all right i think we're done for today it's quite late so i hope you've enjoyed this one and uh maybe give some stifles and time of a bit of love next time you're playing some legacy do love some Tarmogoyf and Stifles. And don't forget our little friend, Nimble Mongoose. Although you should have the proper art, not this one. Anyway, remember to like and subscribe. Share my content with anyone that you think might be interested. And why not check out my Patreon? It's got regular articles going up on it. Like I do an article a month as well as a full update of my primer uh, with like a meta discussion for Green Black Tower Depths. So if that's your jam, why not get into that? And if you want a donation deck, just get in touch. Uh, either via the discord or the comments below and we can sort out for you i would love to play some weird and wonderful things between my testing kind of break it up a bit playing some cool stuff so if you've got some fun things send them my way all right thank you very much for watching this and goodbye <laughs>